And this is why I've been saying for the last two years that you will see the Western system, the COMEX and the LBMA exposed for what it is. It is a scam, if you will, where where the market, where the, the futures market is controlling the price of the underlying commodity, and it's not right. So let me just read this to you because it's very telling. He says, the second part of this new currency is price. For the moment, price is determined by Western speculation. Very true. We produce these commodities, we consume them, but we do not have our own price mechanism, which will balance supply and demand. Now, during the COVID pandemic, the price for oil fell to nearly zero. Now, he's wrong there. It fell to negative $40 a barrel. Kind of, I guess that encapsulates my point where an exchange can push oil down to negative 40 a barrel. That's not right. Anyways, he says, it's impossible to make any strategic planning for economic development if you do not control prices of basic commodities. Price formation with this new currency should get rid of the Western exchanges of commodities. Andy Sheckman exposes the BRICS covert acquisitions aimed at reshaping global economics. From challenging Western exchanges to cornering commodity markets, learn about the profound shifts underway. Subscribe for more insights. Because James Rickards came out and publicly said that they're going to issue a common settlement currency at the August meeting in Johannesburg last year, I think a lot of people came when they came out of that meeting and said, no, we're going to we're going to task our finance ministers with going back to the drawing board and, and presenting their new findings at the meeting here in Russia uh, in October. Uh, people said it's a nothing burger. I look at it differently. Like in crypto speak, mass adoption. Well, 35 more countries have formally applied to the BRICS and another 20 plus have, have informally applied. Take a look at what Saudi Arabia has done in the span of just a couple of years. They've joined the BRICS. Uh, They have applied to the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is the largest regional uh, financial and military organization on the planet. And they, too, will join BRICS, as James Rickard said, and as I've been saying for three years, because they're the same countries that are all invested in the Belt Road Initiative, in in the BRICS, in, in the new BRICS Development Bank that Saudi Arabia also applied to. Saudi Arabia signed military agreements with Russia for protection, and it's the protection of the Saudi kingdom that gives us the dollar hegemony. So when you have a country that that signs an executive order to go green, that Biden did, that weaponizes the dollar, where our brain-dead Treasury Secretary goes to Brazil just a few weeks ago in Russia's backyard, part of the BRICS, and says, look, uh, we, we need to not just sanction the Russian uh, $380 billion in Forex reserves. We need to confiscate it to, to uh, rebuild the Ukraine. So we are a country that if you do not align with us ideologically, well, we're going to take your assets, not just sanction them like we did Iran, but we're going to take them. And and you know what? We don't need you anymore, um, Saudi Arabia. And even though it is the linchpin of the dollar hegemony, you know, our protection of Saudi Arabia is is, is what has made them and, and by extension OPEC value the dollar or oil in dollars and then recycle the excess in U.S. treasuries. Well, look at what they've been doing. Uh, aside from all of these relationships they, they have been making, uh, aside from the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, you know, saying China was our most important trading partner this year, but for the next 50. Well, yep. th- those numbers are important. The last 50 years, it was 50 years ago that we signed the Petro Agreement. So we are putting ourselves in a place to to lose the world reserve status. But when you talk about <clears throat> gold, look, all of these countries have been accumulating gold, in particular the Chinese, for 16 straight months in a row. And just like the finance minister, Sergei um, Glaziev, said a few years ago that they are going to issue a common settlement currency in time that will be a basket of local currencies and a basket of commodities. Well, lo and behold, we just heard this a couple of days ago. And there was a an interview that was done on, I think it's called TASS, T-A-S-S. And it's a news agency in Russia. I, I, I think it's really worth uh, people reading and going to. It's usually a few days ahead of uh, Zero Hedge. Anyways, the gentleman who was interviewed there came out and said exactly this, that yes, uh, we can confirm that we are in the process of working on a, 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 a two-basket currency, one of local currencies and the other of commodities. Now, we know all of this, and we know that that gold being tier one is probably going to be very relevant in this. This is all stuff we know. And he also came out and said it will be digital, just like um, 
the project Embridge, which was developed by Singapore, China, oh, yeah, and the right. United Arab Emirates, which allows central bank digital currencies to trade cross-border without using the SWIFT system. In fact, there were just a few trades done recently. So they, they said it will be digital, uh, two baskets of currencies. But I want to read you what he said. And this, to me, is the most important thing uh, to take away from I think what's going on with the BRICS, what's going on with the new currency, what's going on with their accumulation of gold, because it will, just like Zoltan Pozar said, we're in, entering into a system of commodities and transparency. So, but here's what they had to say. And, and this is why I've been saying for the last two years that you will see the Western system, the COMEX and the LVMA exposed for what it is. It is a scam, if you will, where, where the market, where the, the, futures market is controlling the price of the underlying commodity, and it's not right. So let me just read this to you because it's very telling. He says, the second part of this new currency is price. For the moment, price is determined by Western speculation. Very true. We produce these commodities, we consume them, but we do not have our own price mechanism, which will balance supply and demand. Now, during the COVID pandemic, the price for oil fell to nearly zero. Now, he's wrong there. It fell to negative $40 a barrel. Kind of I guess that en encapsulates my point where a, an exchange can push oil down to negative 40 a barrel. That's not right. Anyways, he says, it's impossible to make any strategic planning for economic development if you do not control prices of basic commodities. Price formation with this new currency should get rid of the Western exchanges of commodity. Here enters the the um, Moscow exchange for metals. Here enters the Shanghai gold exchange. Here enters the exchange in Dubai where these are the, the, I believe, will be the epicenters for commodity pricing. Now, it's also fair to note two other things. One, the Chinese bought the LME, the London Metal Exchange, about three, four years ago. And the LME is largely a base metal exchange. They do some precious metals, but mostly copper, zinc, lead, you know, steel, aluminum, all of that kind of stuff. And they just said they're going to start warehousing in China the metals that are traded on the LME. So it's precious metals. It's base metals. And they just came out the other day and said they are going to issue now the BRICS grain exchange because all of the prices are primarily determined by the Chicago Commodity Exchange. So what they are doing, and think of mass adoption, think of doing things methodically, think of doing things the right way before you pull the trigger, little by little by little, then bang, all at once. They are literally cornering all of the commodities from soft metals like corn and wheat and soybeans, which are now, um, they're canceling, the Chinese are canceling all sorts of these contracts with American farmers and buying them from Brazil, paying for it in yuan, which is immediately convertible into gold on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And then they own gold, the only other tier one asset. So they are building a grain exchange to get rid of the, the, the COMEX and the mercantile exchange. They are, they own the LME, which, which ultimately will be the platform for all, uh, industrial metals. And they are pickpocketing using the Western suppression of, of price. Everything that is not nailed down where 400 million ounces of silver nearly have been delivered off of COMEX in the last two years. That's almost exactly what India has imported. So you can see this is very methodical. And I think they're using wow. the suppression and the leverage of the West against us until there's right. no one stupid enough to deliver at these prices. And then you get that all at once moment where the prices are then quoted on the other exchanges. And last point, the Shanghai Metals Exchange right now is starting to kind of do that. They're turning up the arbitrage sheet. Silver is priced $3 an ounce higher in Shanghai than it is in the United States and in London. And gold is about 80 bucks higher. So the, the sophisticated oh. traders who have access to all three markets will buy in London, they'll buy in Chicago, and they'll deliver in Shanghai. Little by little by little by little, they are accumulating what Zoltan Pozar said, a system dominated by commodities not and transparency, not opaque debt instruments. So I think it's a big deal. It's a big deal what's going on with the, the BRICS accumulating metals for sure. Thanks for joining us today as we explored key insights. From highlighting the move towards commodity-based systems to discussing new pricing centers like the Moscow Exchange for Metals, we've covered vital ground. China's strategic acquisitions signal significant shifts in global economics. Remember, these changes have wide-reaching effects.